Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a reflection on a negatively skewed variable using Microsoft Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to perform parametric statistics, and many parametric statistics require that the dependent variable is normally distributed. So if we're working with data that has a non normally distributed dependent variable, we can conduct what's called a transformation and conduct the analysis on the transformed data. But when we have a negatively skewed dependent variable, we need to perform a reflection so that we get the mirror image positively skewed distribution. And then we can apply the transformation to that positively skewed variable. If a dependent variable is negatively skewed, but it's still normally distributed, then there's no need to perform a reflection. So the reflection is only performed when a dependent variable is negatively skewed and it's not normally distributed. So I have fictitious data loaded into a worksheet here in Excel, and I have 100 records. And I'm going to take a look at the histogram for this variable. So I have A2 selected. I'm just going to hit Control Shift down arrow to select all the data in that column. Go to Insert and then select Insert Statistic Chart and then from there Histogram. And we can see this variable is negatively skewed. You see the points, the high frequency here, the points on the right and then the lower frequencies as we move toward the left. So the tail of this distribution points toward the left and that's how we know it's negatively skewed. We can also calculate the skewness using the Excel skew function. So go here to D3, equal sign then skew and select A2, control shift down arrow, and hit enter. And you can see we have a skewness of negative 1.45. So this distribution is actually heavily negatively skewed, or we might refer to it as severely negatively skewed. Either way, we would have a strong suspicion that it's not normally distributed because of this skewness value. Now, I have a video that shows you how to check for normality in Excel. Uh, SPSS has a stronger set of tests to test for normality if you have access to that. But here we're going to move forward the assumption that these data are not normally distributed and we want to perform reflection. So in order to perform a reflection, uh, we're going to need to know that we need to perform it. So we're going to need to check the skewness and preferably check to see if the data are normally distributed. And we're also going to need to know the maximum value in the data set. And we can get that by using the max function in Excel. So I'll select A2, Control Shift down arrow, Enter. And we can see the maximum is 48.2. These data are sorted uh, in descending order, so the maximum value is at the top. But the max function will return the maximum value no matter where it appears in the column. And then we want to build the function for the reflection. So we'll start with equal sign, and then we want to take this new value, the maximum value, and select it and then press F4 because we want it to be an absolute reference. I'm going to auto fill this down and I don't want this reference to change. I want it to stay locked at D4. Then I'm going to add a value 1, so the maximum value plus 1, and then I'm going to subtract the score from the negatively skewed data here and then hit enter. And of course the first value is going to be 1. 
and I'm going to auto fill this all the way down to row 101, all 100 records. Now they're already selected, so I'll hit insert and I'll run a histogram with these data and you can see now we have the mirror image. We have a positively skewed distribution. And we can test this with the skewness function as well. Right? We go here to uh, I3 and I'll put in skew and then select the new reflection values. So control shift down arrow, enter. And you can see that the skewness values are mirror images of one another. So we have negative 1.45 and 1.45. So the absolute value of the skewness of the negatively skewed variable and the reflection are identical. It's simply a positive skew instead of a negative skew. So from this point, the reflection is complete we've converted the negatively skewed variable into a positively skewed variable. And this is the point where you would apply the transformation or transformations that you wanted to apply to the new reflected variable. I mentioned earlier that based on this skewness value of negative 1.45, that this negatively skewed variable was severely negatively skewed. So typically, for a severely negatively skewed variable, we probably think of a log 10 transformation. But I'm going to show you both square root and log 10. Both are relatively easy to put together. So if we wanted to use a square root transformation of this variable, we start with the reflection. And it's sqrt for the square root function. And then just select the value from the reflection variable and then auto fill that all the way down. And then we're going to want to check the skewness of this variable. So I'll just temporarily uh, put it here. So it'd be skew and then K2, control shift down arrow. So we can see the skewness there is. 0.75. So that's not nearly as disruptive as the negative 1.45 in terms of moving forward and running analyses with these data. But this still is not ideal. Let's take a look at the histogram for the square root transformation. Again, control shift down arrow, selecting all the data in the square root variable and then insert and histogram. So you can see it still appears uh, positively skewed. We know that from the skewness value, but looking at this histogram, it does not appear to be normally distributed. But certainly, again, an improvement over the original variable. So if we move back up, we can also run what's called a log 10 transformation. So this will be equal sign log 10, that's the function. And then again, we're going to select from the reflection variable here. And we'll auto fill this all the way down. And let's take a look at the skewness for the log 10 transformation. We skew. We can see it's negative 0 0.02, or just about zero. So this is a fairly good outcome from a skewness of negative 1.45 to just about zero. It would appear that the log 10 transformation is probably a good choice in this case. Now, let's take a look at the histogram for log 10. And we can see it looks more or less normally distributed. Again, we don't know for sure without running a test of normality. Uh, but this does appear to be normally distributed just by taking a quick look at this histogram. 
So if we're working with actual data here, and, this, and we're conducting an actual analysis, then the log 10 variable would be the one used in further analyses. I hope you found this video on performing a reflection on a negatively skewed variable in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.